Hello everyone. Uh, we hope that you have been inspired and um, encouraged by the previous topic, which is um, devotional life. Uh, because today we are starting on topic seven, which is your active life of prayer. So we first begin by defining prayer. So prayer is a communication and communion with God. It is the closest, most intimate moment that we can have with God. And it's also clearly the best investment that we can have in our daily lives, um, in our daily spiritual life. Because in our prayer time, you know, the depths of our spirit is in communion with the spirit of God. And out of this communion comes out amazing things. Um, amazing things can happen in our life as well as the life of the people that we are praying for. Um, so we receive instructions, we receive guidance, or even a burden to pray for certain things in our communion with God. So... God's instructions are also very clear on on how to pray, who to pray for, what we should pray for, when to pray, or even where to pray. Um, God created man to be in fellowship with him, and daily prayer is important to that relationship. And also, we have to pray to the Father in the name of Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. So pray to the Father. In Luke 11 verses 2, it says that um, he said to them, this is Jesus saying, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. So we should pray to the Father, to our Creator. We should pray. We are in communion with the sovereign God of the universe. And also we should pray in the name of Jesus Christ. In John 14, verse 13 to 14, And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father in heaven may be glorified through the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. And also, we have to pray through the power of the Holy Spirit. In Ephesians 6, verse 18, it says that, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. So, how do we pray then? So, we pray very persistently. We pray um, persistently and continually. It is all about asking, seeking, and knocking. In, you know, God's pro God promises to be there to listen to us when we come to Him. He will never turn a deaf ear to anything that concerns us. So we should pray faithfully and pray persistently. And that means praying without ceasing so even though we don't see anything that's happening yet um, prayer is about trusting God in John 15 verse 7 it says that if you remain in me and my words remain in you you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted and also in Matthew 7 verse 7 to 8 it says that ask and it will be given to you seek and you will find knock and the door will be opened to you for everyone who asks receives the one who seeks finds and to the one who knocks the door will be open and that's the reason why we have to pray very very persistently now when do we pray then so when do we pray so we pray without ceasing and we pray continually and we should also make prayer our priority of the day so there is nothing more important than to make prayer the first priority of our day it is putting god first and it sets the tone of our day it uplifts us it encourages us it strengthens us for the challenges ahead it enables us knowing that god is on our side so let us be faithful in prayer so romans 12 verse 12 says that be joyful in hope patient in affliction and faithful in prayer and also in first thessalonians 5 17 it says pray continually and colossians 1 3 also says that we always thank god the father of our lord jesus christ when we pray for you so um who 
to pray for them. So who do we pray for? So we pray for all people. Now God delights in us when we become intercessors. We He delights in um in us praying for other people. Um in First Timothy second chapter chapter two verse one it says i urge you first of all to pray for all people ask god to help them intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them now note it says first of all pray for all people it comes to a point in our daily life in our daily spiritual life in our daily prayer life that we pray not only for ourselves but we pray for other people now what are the examples on like what to pray for other people we we pray for for um for spiritual wisdom for their eyes to be open so that they will be able to see god as who god is in our lives uh, we pray for them to be strengthened in their weaknesses we pray for healing might it might be physically it might be emotionally it might be spiritually and we also pray for the wisdom of god to be upon them so that when the knowledge comes the god the knowledge um, sets on them um and they are enlightened then they would be able to lead godly lives so we intercede for all people um also in Matthew 5 4, 44 it says here I say love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so we also pray for our for um, people around us for our, for those that persecute us for them to come to know the Lord um, and now um, the other thing is where to pray so where do we pray it says here to pray in private um, to pray in private. Matthew 6 verse 6 says, When you pray, go away by yourself. Shut the door behind you. Um, then your Father who sees everything will reward you. Um, even Jesus, Jesus when he prayed had to go away. He went to a specific place uh, where he was able to, to talk with the Father. Now, it's going to be the same thing with us. You have to find we have to find a specific part of the house where 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 we can always meet God um, during our prayer time. It is a place where you and God meet, an intimate and a holy place where you can pour out your hearts, where you can weep and where you can cry and where you can share your concerns. You can even share your disappointments. You can share your joys, your innermost longings. And in this special part of the house is where you can find solace. You can find guidance from God. It is your place where you will find answers to the deepest questions you have in life. So find a place and set a time to for it. And I tell you, you'll be amazed of what God can do in your life and the life of others that you pray for. So it's going to be a place where you will be meeting God in that very specific time. In Mark 1st, chapter 35. Um, it says here, before daybreak the next morning, Jesus got up and went out to an isolated place to, place to pray. So even Jesus had an isolated place to pray and he started his prayer early in the morning. So that is the way we should model our prayer life. We should start our day with prayer just like Jesus and we should go to this special place where you and God will meet alone where you will find solace and comfort in times of need when you where you will find peace in times of trouble and where you will find answers to all the questions that you have and so the the other one is what do you pray for them so in Romans 8 26 it says here in the same way the spirit helps us in our weaknesses we do not know what to pray for but the spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans so you know god wants to hear us he delights in every minute of the day that we give to him um Prayer is an experience with God. It is offering our heart's desires to God with humble confidence that we shall obtain mercy through Jesus Christ. So it's almost like a child to a father where we can go 
to our Father asking for anything, knowing and trusting that He would give, give it to us. So therefore, in Hebrews 4.16, it says that, Let us then confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and find grace whenever we need help. So just like a father to his child, he would not... Um, he would he would desire to give us the best blessings that we can actually um, have. So we should approach the the throne of grace uh, with confidence in our hearts. So how do we pray then? So when we pray, um, you know, we have the Lord's Prayer in Matthew 6, verses 9 to 13. It is the prayer model. So the first thing we need to do is to acknowledge God as our Father. We are to glorify and worship His name, His very being. It's bowing to the Almighty God. There is nothing more significant than bowing and kneeling in the holiness of the of the God the Father. It is there is nothing more important for us than to acknowledge who God is in our lives, our Creator, our Savior, our Lord. Um, and so when we come into communion with Him, we pray surrendering everything um, because we know that He is our Alpha and our Omega. And also we should pray in in uh, faith. So Mark 11 verse 24 says, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And also, we have to pray with a forgiving spirit. It says there, um, forgive us our sins in the Lord's prayer. So in Mark 11 verse 25, it says, When you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your Father in heaven will forgive you of your sins. And also we should pray in with perseverance. So in Luke 18 um, verse 1 to 7, there is this parable of a persistent widow. So Jesus um, told a parable to his disciples to actually tell them of why we should persistently pray. So the parable of the persistent widow is all about there is a judge that doesn't care about God and doesn't care about other people or what they think of him and so there was also this widow which is the same thing so the widow persistently kept going to the judge um, asking him to uh, spare her of her adversaries and so the judge thought that if this widow keeps keeps coming to me so um, just to stop her, I would give her her, I would grant her her request just so she would stop, she would stop coming to me. So God, Jesus then says that if that is the way the judge is to the, to the widow, then how much for, how much more for God? How much more for God who, who would delight in giving the best blessings to his righteous children? And so how, how much more um, for us? Um, and so with that one, that's the reason why we have to consistently and persistently pray because God uh, is like our Father. He would delight in giving us um, what we need. And also we, we, we should pray in righteousness. So Psalms 34, 15 says, The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their cry. So the prayers of the righteous is very powerful. And so how do we pray then how to pray so number one is we have to set a regular time and choose the best place so make prayer the first order of the day and number two begin with thanksgiving and praise in psalms 100 verse um, 2 to 5 it says worship the lord with gladness and come before him with joyful songs know that the lord is god know that the lord is god so we have to acknowledge who god is in our lives the supreme god of the universe and number three Three, let your heart commune with God's heart. I surrender all. It's almost like a child to a father. Allowing God to speak to us and minister to our souls as we pour out our hearts to him. And number four is to declare a statement of, of faith, which means we have to claim God's promises. In Luke 11 verse 9 to 10, it says here again, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find, and knock and the door shall be open. And God says, if he promises it, he will answer our prayers. 
And so the personal application for this topic would be um, in your daily life, how much time will you devote in prayer? Is it enough to strengthen your relationship with God? How are you going to handle distractions during your prayer time with the Lord? So that is all about um, about um, our daily prayer. Um, and I would like you to, um, I would like to invite you for um, a prayer then. Father, thank you for today. Thank you that you are always there for us, listening to us when we come to you, listening to our cries, listening to our hurts and even our struggles. Lord, you have promised to answer our prayers in accordance to your will. We pray that you continue to strengthen us in our weaknesses and to guide us in our daily walk with you. And most of all, to help us always put you first in our lives every day. We love you and we magnify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I would like to invite you for um, to keep in tune to the next topic, which is another exciting topic, which is all about witnessing and sharing your new life to others. So um, stay in tune. God bless you. Stay safe and be encouraged.